Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Teresa Caputo, who is also known as the Long Island medium? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. So first I'll look at the background in this case, then I'll move to my analysis. Teresa Caputo was born in Hicksville, New York on June 10, 1966. She was raised in that same area on Long Island. She married in 1989, had two children, and divorced in 2018. Teresa claims to be a so-called medium. That is, she has a special power to communicate with the dead. She is best known for starring in the TV series Long Island Medium, starting in 2011. The show is on the channel TLC. Teresa said she started seeing and hearing things other people could not when she was four years old. These objects were not of the physical world, but from the other side, from an entity she calls spirit. She refers to spirit as a name, so not the spirit, but just spirit. It was not until she was in her 20s that she was able to effectively communicate with various entities like loved ones, angels, and guides by channeling spirit. This is when she realized she was not only communicating with her own departed loved ones, but the departed loved ones of everybody. Teresa said she struggled with this gift for over five years. She could not understand why God blessed her with the gift. She wondered to herself who would want to use her gift. What type of people would want to connect with the dead? At some point, she decided to use her gift to heal people. Teresa claims that her gift grows every day. She learns something new every time she channels spirit. In addition to her TV show, Teresa performs at live shows. She said that she starts by telling the audience what they can expect for the two-hour show. She then starts to sense and feel spirit. She is guided around the theater by Spirit, who directs her to stop in front of the person that they're speaking to. This allows Teresa to deliver the healing message. Teresa works with Spirit to validate the message, so she's trying to prove that she's really communicating with the customer's departed relative. This is done by generating information specific to that person, something the customer will recognize. At the time of making this video, Teresa continues to work and has had incredible financial success. According to her website, she's very busy. Many people want a psychic reading from her. She was booked for two years before the TV show aired, and now the waiting list to see her is even longer. It would appear that Teresa simply can't take people's money fast enough. Now moving to my analysis. As is the case for every medium, psychic, or clairvoyant, there is no scientific reason to believe that Teresa has any type of special power, yet she continues to claim to communicate with the dead. The main tactic she employs to convince people that she's really talking to the dead is referred to as cold reading. This tactic involves the insidious and non-invasive collection of information from a potential customer. For example, details revealed in a casual conversation or from simply observing somebody's physical appearance. How are they dressed? What's their hairstyle? Do they have any tattoos? Are they tall or short? There's all types of information one person can collect from another without really having to be invasive. Teresa then makes educated guesses about their loved ones in the hope that one of those guesses will resonate with one of the members of the audience. She often chooses high probability events, like when she's talking to the audience, she might say something like, has somebody's relative died from heart disease or cancer? Sometimes she selects events that are certain to happen. For example, she might say something like, is there a birthday coming up? Someone in the crowd might say, yes, my deceased loved one's birthday is coming up in eight months. Teresa can latch onto this and start adding to it by telling the person that their relative misses them, is proud of them, or other generic statements that are supportive. Statistically, when she's talking to a group of a few hundred people, and she vaguely describes common ways that people die, she is sure to have a number of people who say, oh yeah, I have a relative who died that way. 
Teresa doesn't offer anything specific unless it comes from the customer. The success of her tactic is dependent on being vague. When video of this technique in action is edited to appear on television, the inaccurate guesses mysteriously make their way to the afterlife, leaving only the correct guesses behind. So Teresa appears to have this incredible ability based on this selection of certain events that make it onto the final video. Some people have suggested that Teresa also uses hot reading, meaning she gets information about the backgrounds of the customers outside of what can be made through observation in the moment, like from social media or eavesdropping. This is information that the customer doesn't necessarily know that Teresa has accessed. Teresa's behavior has drawn a substantial amount of criticism. In addition to the standard criticism of all so-called mediums, we see more specific criticisms. Like on the 20th anniversary of the September 11 attacks, a special edition of Long Island Medium featured Teresa giving readings to people who had relatives die in the attack. This caused a bit of an outrage. Many people thought this was taking the psychic nonsense too far. People felt as though relatives of those killed had suffered enough without being exposed to Teresa. Let's take a look at a few of the other interesting items connected to the behavior, beliefs, and personality of Teresa Caputo. Item number one, Teresa simultaneously believes that she has a gift and that anybody can learn to do what she does. This contradiction is popular with so-called mediums. Item number two, Teresa implies that practically speaking, she cannot turn off her ability. It takes more energy to block the souls than to acknowledge what they're saying. I find this item interesting because it's like she's saying, I can't help but do this. Don't blame me for being a medium. Item number three, in the introduction for one of her books, Teresa said that when she was younger, she had debilitating anxiety that affected every part of her life. She could not do everyday activities without panicking. She went to a therapist but it didn't really make much of a difference. Then she went to see a spiritual healer and teacher who explained to her that the anxiety she was experiencing was because she was a medium and suppressing the energy of spirit. Essentially, what Teresa claims to believe is that the energy of spirit entered her head, but she blocked it with her chest, which led to an increased heart rate and the sensation that her body was heavy. Once she fully accepted her gift, the anxiety lessened. This item is notable because it features a common tactic with mediums and psychics. They make this argument that conventional mental health counseling will fail. Science doesn't find the truth. Competent licensed professionals really don't know what they're doing. If you want the truth, you have to go to a new age nonsense broker. This falsehood is used to legitimize the business of psychic reading. Item number four, Teresa appears to be particularly drawn to readings which involve a dead person forgiving a living person. One example she gives is a boy with a disability who died when he was four years old. His mother left the house one day, and the boy somehow exited the house using a sliding door and drowned in the pool in the backyard. The boy's father was supposed to be watching him. The mother blamed the father. They were on the verge of a divorce when they went to see Teresa. She told them that the boy spoke to her and said it wasn't the father's fault. The couple stayed together. This particular tactic of telling people that their dead loved ones forgive them is a very powerful tool for mediums. It cuts through rational thought and taps right into emotions. People carry a lot of guilt and shame. Teresa can free them from these feelings, albeit with untrue statements. Teresa does more than just offer psychic readings. She has a number of lessons that are contained in the books that she has written. One of her books is titled, You Can't Make This Stuff Up, which is ironic, considering Teresa's success appears to be totally dependent on making stuff up. The best way to sum up her books would be this. They are like a collection of meaningless platitudes that are extremely non-judgmental. If you want to believe one thing, that's okay. If you want to believe something else, that's okay too. It's a bunch of encouraging statements. Everything will work out. Just be positive. Don't be afraid of anything. Everything has a purpose. Look for messages in the world around you. Everybody's soul 
is at a level of learning. The more the soul learns, the higher its energy frequency, which she also refers to as vibration. Dreams can provide life lessons and help people prepare for the future. Teresa is not sure that hell exists, which I find interesting considering that the experience of spending hours reading her books sure feels like being in hell. There's no rhyme or reason to the order of the items in her books. They are really just a disorganized mess of random, non-committal, and overly positive platitudes. What meaningful lessons can be learned from the work of Teresa Caputo? The fact that a so-called medium like Teresa can be so successful speaks to the desperation and gullibility that are rampant in society. When people lose a loved one, they often feel guilt or shame. They're desperate for some way to take away that pain or make sense of the person's death. Along comes somebody like Teresa, willing to exchange her gift for money, or more accurately, to tell people what they need to hear for money. She claims to communicate with the dearly departed. The message that she returns with is always positive and encouraging. It's never like the dead person says, you should feel guilty, you should be ashamed, you treated me terribly when I was alive. Rather, the person says something like, oh, don't worry about ignoring me when I was alive. I forgive you. Don't worry about your negligence killing me. It all worked out for the best. They might say that their death had a higher purpose. It was necessary. Everything worked out the way it was supposed to. Essentially, Teresa is telling her customers that everything is wonderful. There's no need for guilt or shame. They are released from that. She is freeing them with this message. The dead person who they miss loves them, forgives them, and is happy about dying. They're thrilled to be dead. After all, it gave them this great opportunity to talk to Teresa Caputo. They jumped up several years on that waiting list. There's something else that occurs to me about the way Teresa operates. All these people who died were at one time, of course, alive and communicated with people. They may have been ignored or discounted when they were alive, but when they're dead, their loved ones want to talk to them. I find this interesting because the conversation is very one-sided. Even if one assumes that Teresa can talk to the dead, which she cannot, the dead person is not really saying anything meaningful. I think this is a way for the grieving person to control the narrative, to believe what they need to believe to escape negative feelings. Why is it that the dead people are always so positive, helpful, and forgiving? It's because that's what the living people need to believe. Teresa Caputo is giving people exactly what they want, which is why she will continue to be in demand. Those are my thoughts in the case of Teresa Caputo. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comments section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found this analysis to be more intriguing than vague, nonsensical platitudes. Thanks for watching.